It's a great pleasure to be here in Orlando, Florida. I am um, humbled and excited to share with you because I, like you, sat in the audience over the last 10 years attending anti-aging conferences. And it inspired me to search and to learn and to grow, change some of my opinions, adopt some new beliefs, all in the interest of longevity and quality of life. So how many here would like to live to a longer, better quality life? Let me see a show of hands. The prospects of living to age 100 and plus sometimes are frightening when we consider our forefathers and how they survived or did not and their quality or lack of quality of life. So reversing chronic diseases of aging is germane and appropriate to a quality life because unfortunately many of us reach age 60. How many here are above the age of 50? Let me see a show of hands. Age 60, above, 70, anyone above, 80? We reach these decades and as like Bob Del Matique once told me, pictured here at age 84, Dr. Nick, age 70 is no picnic. Age 80 is even tougher. And now at age 87, new challenges present. So what is the protocol that can help you to live a longer, better quality life and quite potentially avoid diseases such as those people living in Okinawa, north of Japan, and Bama, China, where these people have almost a complete absence of chronic diseases that we associate with end stages of life, like coronary heart disease, diabetes, hypertension. Even Alzheimer's disease is rather rare in these cultures. What is it that they do differently than we do? And is it truly a disease of aging or a disease of genetics? Yet, you have to question that probability of genetics, although it may leave you susceptible to these diseases. The reality is when these same people who live in Oka Okinawa or China migrate to first Hawaii and then later to the United States, and as they adopt our lifestyle, our eating patterns, our habits of daily living, quite often these diseases, these insidious diseases of the heart and of the organs start to develop and manifest to, to represent the general population in which they live. Is it contagious? Unlikely. Is, is it possible that going to the same refrigerator and lack of physical activity is associated with these diseases? I believe so. In fact, what makes these populations amongst the longest lived in the world is the fact that they consume fibrous vegetable foods, very rich fiber diet, in fact, so high in fiber, some of you would be surprised to learn that they probably take in nearly five to 10 times the amount of fiber you consume. In fact, I start off my morning breakfast with over two pounds of raw fruits and vegetables every day, blended up in a blender. These people consume sea plants, rich in trace minerals and nutrients. They consume fresh fruit. They climb trees to, to pick these, these wondrous fruits and vegetables. They have a rice-based diet or a yam-based diet, as in the case of Okinawa, the purple sweet potatoes. They consume a considerable amount of mushrooms rich in beta-glucans. Is this possible one of the reasons why they manifest a higher testosterone, a higher natural DHEA at age 100 than we do at age 70. In the United States today, in North America, Canada, and some parts of Western Europe, we have a life expectancy that's shorter than in 38 other countries in the world. How could that be? We pride ourselves on one of the best medical care systems in the world. And yet, I can't even think of 38 other countries that could possibly outlive us. But the key is, not at birth, because we have a fairly low infant mortality rate because of clean sanitary conditions, but past the age of 40, our outcome on life expectancy is rather dismal. 
That is that your likelihood by the age of 40, 50, or 60 to succumb and die from coronary heart disease, stroke, or diseases of the vascular system or circulation are so high that we have reached an epidemic proportion of death rate related to stroke, heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. It's possible that although we've controlled diseases of accidents and diseases of infectious nature, that chronic diseases of aging may be very well your biggest nemesis. When we look at the concerns of disease of the heart, the first primary and most obvious I want to call your attention to is a disease that my mentor, Nathan Pritikin, once coined. He called it lipotoxemia, which is fat or excess poisoning. And he described this disease in great detail. It was quite clear that when Dr. Roy Swank looked in the capillaries of the eye, since you can take a video camera and under high resolution, or under a microscope from a drop of blood, but better under high speed resolution, you could magnify the small blood vessels in the eye, and you could actually see, after the introduction of fatty foods for breakfast, eggs, bacon, cheese in the omelet, cooked in the richest virgin olive oil, all this fat, which under normal conditions, the visualization of the red blood cells, round and uniform, biconcave discs, when they bump into each other, they would slide off and continue through their path of your circulation and transport oxygen and nutrients and exchange carbon dioxide, basically removing waste and carrying nutrients and oxygen. Unfortunately, within two to four hours of the consumption of these greasy, oily, fatty foods, including your favorite virgin olive oil that I'm picking on this morning because really olives themselves are whole natural foods. When you extract hundreds of olives to get a small tablespoon of corn oil or 14 ears of corn to get one tablespoon of corn oil, this oil pours into the bloodstream within 12, uh, within four hours and remains in your bloodstream for at least 12 to 18 hours. And it's not the type of fat, whether it's saturated or polyunsaturated fat, that's not the problem. It's a mechanical problem. It's the fact that oil of any type is very sticky. And when it coats the blood cells, it causes the cells to clump together like the bottom picture in a condition we call rouleau. Rouleau is French for stack of coins. 